What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So today we're just going to go in and we're going to have some kind of fun modeling with the extension curve aloft, just kind of seeing what we can create. We've done some videos like this in the past, but they're always a lot of fun uh, creating kind of a framework and a skin and seeing what we can come up with. So before I get started, I do want to take a second and thank my supporters on Patreon. As you know, Patreon's a site where you can support creators that you like. Um, so if you're interested in supporting the show, um, everything that I get from Patreon goes back into the show. Um, it gets invested for more extensions, uh, more things that I can use to bring you better stuff on the SketchUp Essentials and make it more interesting. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check out that link below. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to create kind of a framework and we're going to do it, um, we're going to use a little bit of geometry in order to do it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off, we're going to draw a circle. It can probably be a 12-sided circle. So I'm just going to tap the C key to activate that, or probably a 24-sided circle. And right now my circle tool defaults to that, but tap the C key and just type in 24 and hit Enter. And that'll create a pretty smooth circle. As most of you know, the way SketchUp creates circles is it makes them out of segments, just like this. And so you can see how if you look at these, there's actually 24 segments along the side of this circle. And one of the things you can do to check that is you can click on your circle, or you can click on the edge of your circle, and SketchUp will actually give you the information of this circle. So in this case, it says there's 24 segments in this circle. So I can actually adjust that right now. I could make it 48 if I wanted to. I could make it 12. Um, and you can see how this kind of adjusts as I do that. So I could make it 6, and it would make this a hexagon. So we're just going to make it 24 for right now. It probably doesn't matter all that much for what we're trying to do here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this circle, I'm going to select it by double clicking on it, and I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode. So double click, tap that M key, click on this edge, and then tap the control key. And hopefully, this isn't inferencing to the center of my circle in this case. What it's doing is it's just kind of moving across here. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to lock it on this red axis by holding the shift key, and I'll just click on this center point over here. That's going to make sure this is kind of overlapped along the center. And then now we're just going to do kind of the same thing. So I think what I want to do is I just want to click on this circle, and we're just going to use the rotate tool in copy mode to create some kind of overlapping edges. And so in this case, all I did is I just selected this, I activated the rotate tool, which you can activate by using Q key, and I just clicked on this center point. Then I clicked on this other edge, and you can see how if I click and drag this, it just rotates everything. But if I tap the control key, it'll activate copy mode. Alright, so when I do this, I'm just going to click and drag this. See, the one thing you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure, if you kind of look at the way this is rotating, you want to make sure these edges line up. And so all you want to do is you want to move your mouse. In this case, I'm moving this until it kind of locks. So so that it's along this point right here. And so you can see how now I've got this kind of overlap. So I'm going to set my copy. Once it kind of locks in place with the inferencing, I'm going to click to set my copy. And before I do anything else, I'm going to type in the times key. And I'm going to type in, we'll type in times five and hit the enter key. And you can see what that did is that created five copies of this object around this edge here. And so now I've got this kind of interesting geometric shape. And what I want to do now, and again, I'm just kind of fooling around to see what we can come up with, is I just want to draw a line from the center point, and I want to draw it straight up and down. So in this case, I'm just going to draw it to a certain height. You can kind of set the height. And then what I want to do now is I'm going to move my mouse. I'm going to draw an arc from this corner. or from this point to this point. And then probably what I'm going to end up doing actually to make this work is I'm actually going to draw kind of a canvas along here. So I'm just going to draw a face that I can draw my arc on because it didn't really seem to want to do that straight up and down. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw an arc along this face. And we'll say that it'll arc up a little bit. 
All right, and one thing I want to note when you're doing this, because we're going to use the rotate tool in copy mode again, is you can see I'm erasing out all these extra pieces, but you want to make sure you're saving a lot before you do this. For some reason, my SketchUp crashes a lot when I'm trying to create copies. So um, just make sure you're saving before you try to use the rotate tool in copy mode. And so what we're doing is we're just selecting this line and we're just going to activate the rotate tool. Again, do the same kind of thing. We're going to tap the control key. We're going to make a copy over here. And so when we make a copy over here, what we're going to do is we're going to try a couple different things. And so what we're doing is we're using the extension Curviloft, which is an organic modeling extension. So I have that installed. I'll link to that in the notes below. But we're going to use that to create a skin. And so there's a few different options in Curviloft. In this case, we're worried about skin contours. And so what that means is there's a tool in here where you can actually create a skin along kind of a framework. So like for example, if I do a shift click and I select these different options and then I click on skin contours, what it's going to do is it's going to generate a face along here. And so you can see what that does if I just do that one is it just creates a face that just runs along these lines. And so you can use that to create something like uh, glass or bunch of different things. So I could use the rotate tool here. I could just do a times five and I could use that to make make this kind of dome shape. And I could erase out everything on the bottom if I wanted to and you can see how I'm left with this dome. And so we may do that. Let's see what we can come up with if we select these contours. So if you click on these contours you can see how that generates the same kind of thing. It's just a different mesh. So you can use this to create some kind of crazy meshes and different sorts of things, depending on what you want to do. So in this case, let's try this one. So if I create this mesh, and usually what I do when I do something like this is I'll make these a component. I'm just testing to see what this is going to look like real quick. So usually what I'll do is I'll make this a component. I think I actually like this mesh a little bit better just because of the the lines that it generates on your faces. And so what I mean by that is if I come in here and I do this, you can see how this is very uniform. So it all comes to this point and everything, you get these nice contours across the way. Well, part of the reason I'm picking this is because I'm going to run this a couple different times and generate a couple different things. And then we're going to create kind of a pipe along the whole thing. So and uh, I'll show you I'll show you how to do that all in just a second. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create this face. So I'm just going to go ahead and click again. So what you're doing here is you're just selecting these contours. So click, shift click, shift click. Select this or select your uh, your skinning option and go ahead and click again that's going to generate your geometry and all that's really doing is that's generating your face and it's generating your edges and so that's important because we want the edges because what we're going to do is we're actually going to generate a pipe along those edges and so actually we don't even need those because what you've got and I'm actually going to use the outliner is I'm going to call this face and I'm actually going to hide it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run Curviloft two more times in a couple different modes. So the first mode I'm going to run is I'm going to use the skinning option. You can see we already did this. What we want to do is we want to click on this option right here, which will just generate your geometry along the side. And so what these do is these, these basically set what geometry is created. And so you can see how by clicking on these, you can generate some extra hidden geometry. You can, you can generate your different edges. Well, in this case, we're going to go ahead and create this one with these edges. We're going to make it okay. And in this case, we're just going to label this group horizontal edges. And then we'll do it one more time and we'll create what we're going to call the vertical edges. And I'm sure there's probably a more scientific way that we could name this. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and select this one 
and click OK. And the reason I'm generating these separately, because you probably saw that you could generate both, is because we're going to use an extension called Lines to Tubes. And um, what would happen is if we just do Lines to Tubes along these edges just like this, then it's going to look different. So what it would do is these would all be little segments that are intersected both ways, and so these wouldn't look quite as good. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that extension lines to tubes. So all I did is I double clicked in this vertical edges section, and then I'm just going to go up here, and I'll link to this in the notes below as well, and I'm just going to generate tubes on this one. So I'm going to say they're probably, we'll call them half inch tubes and see what that looks like. And we're going to say follow me on curves, yes, create group, yes, go ahead and click OK. What that's going to do is that's going to create tubes along all of these different edges. So, and it's going to generate it inside this group so we can call this one tubes. Now we're going to do the same thing with the horizontal edges. We're just going to select all of them. We're going to go to tools lines to tubes, we're going to hit OK, and that's going to generate all your tubes running this way. And you can see how that's got more segments in it, so it's taking a little bit longer. You can see my PC is slowing down a little bit, and actually what I should have done is I should have saved it first, but that's OK. You can see how now I have this framework in here, and so now you have a couple different options, because if you remember we generated a face earlier as well, so you could unhide this face and you could apply something like glass or some material in this to make kind of a curtain wall shape. You can see how I've got this kind of um, lattice look to it. Or you could also hide that. You could group these two options together. So we'll go ahead and click make group. And remember to save before you do this, but we can use the rotate tool in copy mode. So sometimes you get something kind of messed up in your model when you do this. I'm gonna go ahead and click fix and it'll fix it. It probably wouldn't have affected my model one way or the other anyway, but if you ever get that option, go ahead and click fix. You're not gonna hurt your model by doing that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the rotate tool again. And you see how these kind of intersect in here, and so it's hard to get exactly to this corner point. Well, if you remember, I can rotate things by using this back face as well. So I'm just going to rotate that by setting my base point here and my rotate point here. And you can see how if I type in like times five and hit the enter key, I've got this really cool like framework cage in here. But the way that I did that, my face isn't in there. So you can see how my face is only on one of these. So probably what you should do instead is you see how you have your group with your vertical and horizontal edges? Well, just drag your face into that group. And you can unhide it if you want to just to see kind of what you're looking at. But now everything is in this group. Well, now if I copy all of that, I can turn the face on and off so I can do whatever I want with this. So now that we've got this kind of in a group together, we're going to do one more thing. We're going to take this and we're going to make it a component. And so we're just going to right click on this object and we're going to click make component. And we'll just call it lattice. And hit enter to create it. Well, if you remember, the reason we did that is because then Now if you come in here and you make a change to one of these, like for example if you hide this face, it's going to hide in all of them because they're all copies of the same component. So you can see how when I click on this because I'm inside this group, if I edit something like this lattice piece, like if I was to scale it up or down, you can see how all of these different component pieces are adjusting at the same time. So by using component modeling and by grouping everything, you can really turn things on and off and really kind of adjust the way that this is going to look. So you could also, if you wanted to, like hide your horizontal edges so you just have something vertical. So you have a lot of different options in here if you do that, if you set this up in a smart way. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this workflow? Have you created some cool stuff with Curvaloft? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.